This I believe. Walter Thomas Layton was, until the First World War, a lecturer in economics at Cambridge and at London University. He served on Britain's munitions board and, after the war, was for 16 years editor of The Economist, the distinguished London weekly. Until three years ago, he was chairman of the News Chronicle, a liberal daily. During World War II, he was chief economic planner in the Ministry of Production and then head of the Joint War Production Staff. In recognition of his services, he was created a peer in 1947. As member of the board of the London Daily News, he continues his influence in British journalism. He is now increasingly absorbed in the Council of Europe as vice president of the Consultative Assembly. Here now is Lord Leighton. I grew up in a world in which it was widely held that science and religion could not be reconciled. That phase has passed. In the last half century, we have greatly increased our knowledge of the nature of the universe, from something less than the minutest cell or particle that can be perceived by the microscope to the immensities of the firmament reaching out into distances that can only be measured in millions of light years. There is nothing accidental about all this. For throughout that tremendous range of phenomena, the universe conforms to laws that govern its motions and its existence. Moreover, in this universe there is also life, a mystery which we cannot explain, and the human mind, perhaps the greatest miracle of all. The scale and sweep of the laws of the universe, the mystery of life, and the ability of the human mind to grasp, to analyze, and in some measure to control, reveal the working of an underlying principle or purpose. The deeper we probe into the physical universe, the more surely it brings us back to the concept which most of the world calls God. For me, as for many others, the revelations of recent scientific discovery strengthened my belief in the spiritual world. Though that is a sphere which cannot be weighed in our balances or checked by our measuring rods, there are some things in it of which we may be sure. Few would deny, for example, that deep in the soul of every human being there is an innate sense of the difference between good and evil. I believe also that man is free to choose between right and wrong and is not merely the puppet of his environment. The knowledge of good and evil and this freedom to choose are in fact what distinguishes him from the beasts. This is the divine spark and because of it we must honor and respect the individual integrity of every human being. As man is a social animal it should be the major aim and purpose of our human institutions to help every man to make the best of his qualities and powers. In this sense, and in spite of its many shortcomings, democracy is for me the political application of my belief in God. I can think of no blacker sin than that men should dare to distort and mutilate the minds of their fellow men and bend them to their will by every device of modern science. Such evils are a challenge to this generation and it may be that we shall answer it by transformations in our social institutions and in our international relations as great as those that have been made in the scientific world. We have the means, if we have the will, to ensure to every man those basic human rights and freedoms that are the foundation of the good life. It is in the crusade to achieve this that I believe this generation will find its spiritual outlet. That was Lord Leighton, British economist, newspaper man, and European statesman, who has found that progress in scientific discovery has strengthened his belief in the spiritual world.